Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. I am Basil and this is the Honor View 10. £449, €499, Euros. however it has some flagship specs under the hood and it looks pretty sweet as well. This is our full review so let's get to it kicking off with the design. You can see looking at this thing it's got a roughly 6 inch screen, 18 by 9 aspect ratio, not too much bezeling going on on the front. USB type C at the base as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack, bottom firing mono speaker up top is an infrared blaster wall to the right you've got the buttons and to the left is a sim card slot this also has an sd card slot despite having 128 gigabytes of onboard storage you can also expand it by loads more making it probably the best storage option in any smartphone around right now around the back you've got a dual camera setup slight camera bumps which is a shame however this does ship with a case so those camera bumps are flush with the top of the case in addition the screen protector on the front should keep your phone free from scratches. As for how it feels in day-to-day -day life, seven millimeters thin, it's nice and slender. Fingerprint scanner below the screen's really nice and responsive, and the whole phone is good. Not the most mind-blowing design around. The flat back isn't quite as ergonomic as the curved OnePlus 5T, but still a definite thumbs up in the design department from us. Moving on to the screen, and the View 10 has a 5.99 inch LCD display. It's nice and bright, and it also goes very dark, as little as three nits, so it should be really, really great for bedtime reading as well. Viewing angles are decent too, and it's pretty comparable with other devices in the kind of price range. In fact, it's probably better than everything around other than the OnePlus 5T, as it has an OLED display, which is punchier, which is poppier. The blacks are a little bit deeper as well. However, that doesn't detract from this being an excellent screen for gaming, for watching movies on, for reading text on. It's nice and sharp at 403 pixels per inch. And in addition to that, in the settings, there are lots of options to customize your image. Under the hood, it's Android 8 with Emotion UI 8 over the top. Emotion UI 8 is Huawei and Honor's skin that sits on top of Android, offering some really cool enhancements, such as easy and quick sorting out of your home screens. Unlike Emotion UI 8 on the Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro, there is no Emotion UI desktop in here, so it is a slightly inferior offering there. However, everything's snappy, everything is stable, and everything is very, very customizable. If you don't like customizable and you prefer stock Android, this may not be for you but on the plus side you can always throw a launcher on top the battery under the hood is a 3750 milliamp cell which is a really respectable size given the screen on this thing and that processor too it'll last a full day with no problems it's going to be relatively similar to the oneplus 5t for example in day-to-day -day use not quite class leading but still very respectable. It also supports Supercharge, Huawei's proprietary charging mechanism that allows for fast charging. However, if you're charging this from flat, it's not going to be super fast to get to 100%, around 2 hours and 14 minutes or thereabouts, but half an hour of charge should get you the best part of a working day's usage. The Kirin 970 processor combined with 6 gigabytes of RAM just deliver incredible performance for the price. Over 175,000 on Antutu means benchmarks suggest it is a true flagship as far as power is concerned. Given that the screen's really decent, multimedia is really decent as well. Whether you're reading an ebook, text looks really nice and sharp. Watching a movie, the 18 by 9 aspect ratio means there's minimal letterboxing. You've got tons of storage on here for all those games and movies. Everything just comes together really, really nicely. Again, as with gaming, the mono speaker is a bit of a bust, but you've also got an infrared blast which doubles up as a TV remote control. As for the dual camera, you've got two f1.8 lenses around the back. It's a 20 and 16 megapixel sensor combination, and the results are really good. Plain automatic mode, it has a tendency to overexpose. I'd personally pick the OnePlus 5T over it, but when you dive into the manual settings, semi-manual settings, that's when you can get photos that you can't get on a lot of other top-end flagships like the iPhones, for example, out of the box. What you also get is some fun filters too. You've got AR effects and you've also got that background blur mode that allows you to retrospectively change the amount of background blur after you take your shot, which again, phones like the OnePlus 5T and iPhone don't have. 
The front camera also supports background blur too, and some of the fun AR modes, and 13 megapixels means it's nice and sharp as well. I'd say the key downfall of both of the cameras is that there's no optical image stabilization, so handshake can come through and low light shots suffer compared to top end devices. So to wrap up, for £449.99, Euros, you are getting an incredible phone for the price of the Honor View 10. It goes toe to toe with a OnePlus 5T, winning in certain areas and losing in others. What really makes it stand out is the storage. 128 gigabytes, so much room for all of your movies, all of your games, and the fact it's expandable too means you've got some flexibility there. The design is excellent, the screen's really, really good, performance is off the chart, and the cameras, if you're prepared to play about with them, can be in incredible with really good connectivity as well and that headphone jack despite the fact it doesn't have a mono speaker and the automatic mode on the camera isn't the best it's a very very good phone hopefully you've enjoyed our review of the honor view 10 if you did make sure you check out all our reviews on techradar.com thanks for watching